Before we get this video started, I'll be announcing last video's t-shirt giveaway winner, as well as giving away another t-shirt at the end of the video. So make sure you watch till the end to see if you won or how you can win this t-shirt. What's going on, hybrid shooters? It's Jason Vong and Sigma just sent me their Art 105mm f1.4 to play with, not for keeps, just to do some tests, just to have some first impressions of it. So let's go ahead and jump into the fiery, crackling fireplace to crack open this lens. Yeah, I didn't mean to slap you. It's just more for a transition purpose, but I guess it didn't work out too well. So this is the Sigma Art 105mm f1.4, a telephoto hunk of a bokeh machine, coming in around $15.99 US dollars, $14.99 this holiday season. I think people will be grabbing this for portraits to get that nice separation between the subject and the background. I think it can be great for landscapes as well because of that telephoto compression. With that f1.4 aperture, you're gonna be getting the creamiest, butteriest looking corn suit for a background that you can possibly get, and it's gonna be helpful for that low light situation for you to enjoy that corn soup as well. It's designed for full frame cameras, so you're getting all of that 105 goodness. If you're using it on an APS-C, you're getting about 157.5 millimeter. Now it does weigh in about 3.62 pound or 1.52 kilogram, and not only is it a 105 millimeter lens, but it also takes filters that are 105 millimeter. Whoa, that is a big setup. So big that they have to have a tripod collar for you to stick it on a tripod or a monopod. But hey, if your forearm is twice the size of mine, you can ditch the collar and slap on the provided rubber band. Ooh, talk about flexing, but enough of that. Let's go ahead and get out there and start shooting. After this set. Oh God, damn, this bicep is just burning. Totally not filming your butt, but how's that 105 treating you? This thing is huge. It's like thumping on my butt. I feel like I have a tail. Totally unplanned, but we had a spontaneous photo shoot with Madison, an Instagram influencer that we literally met on the spot. She was out shooting a few photos with her friends, and we just so happened to be needing a model. Because let's face it, I am not very good at modeling. Failure! As expected from an art lens, it is incredibly sharp wide open at f1.4. The eye autofocus works extremely well with this lens. Bokeh that the 105mm gives off at f1.4 is extremely pleasing. If you shot with other Sigma art lenses before, you'll find it very familiar. And can we just sit here and admire these balls for a second? Alright, calm down guys, these are just Christmas balls. No need to get too excited here. All right, now we're gonna do some comparison with the 105 to the 7200 G Master and the 8518 from Sony. Starting off with the 7200 G Master, both yield sharp results, though I would have to give the Sigma the slight edge due to it being a prime lens. You can really tell from the lamp above my head that the 1.4 gives off that extra blur, and when you go in tight for the headshots, the blur becomes more significant. With the 85mm 1.8, we walk the lens closer to get a similar view to view, and the results look nearly identical. Alright, so we just got done with shooting comparison shots with all three lenses, and it's crazy how it focused on the thinnest strand of hair instead of Vivian's eyes. Like, if there's one strand of hair blocking her eye, it's gonna focus on that, so we had to do a lot of takes before we got the right shot. Now it's time to do a video autofocus test. Alright, so one thing to keep in mind is that the tripod collar, the placement of the tripod collar, is going to be different on both lenses. I could mount both cameras, um, mount the cam both cameras on the tripod itself, but then these lenses are too front heavy, so there's no way I could have it balanced on the tripod. So the framing and the distance is a little bit off, but it should still give you a good idea how the 105 uh, Sigma focuses against the 70 to 200 from Sony. For whatever reason, at f1.4 or 1.8, the 105 struggles to focus whenever I disappear and reappear into frame. This happened in several run-throughs, even when it was the only lens that we were testing. However, this issue did not occur when I was at f2.8. In fact, the Sigma reacted to acquire focus faster at this aperture compared to the G Master. Aside from that, as expected, the G Master did a far better job at keeping me in focus as I walk away and towards the camera, while the Sigma did a good job at keeping me in focus as I walk towards the camera only.
Before we jump into reasons why I would not be picking the Sigma 105 f1.4, I just want to quickly thank NordVPN for sponsoring this video. As content creators, you often find ourselves in public areas like this coffee shop here editing our photos and videos. And we're more than likely connected to their public Wi-Fi as well, which leaves all of our information unsafe. God knows I don't want my Twitter account hacked. With NordVPN, I'm able to mask all of my online activities and secure my login info so that I can use my social media freely and upload my content. In addition to working with Mac and Windows, it also works on Android and iOS devices. You can try it risk-free for 30 days with money back guaranteed. For a limited time, if you use my link, nordvpn.com slash Jason Vong, you can get 75% off a three-year plan. This special offer makes your subscription just $2.99 per month. And damn, that is a good deal so you can browse and buy securely on all of your devices. And use the code Jason Vong at checkout to get one extra month for free. If you need more info, again, go to nordvpn.com slash Jason Vong. Okay, we're back home now. Let's talk about our experience with the Sigma Art 105. Now, I personally love telephoto lenses for portraits and especially for street photos. I just love how they compress the background without making your subject feel too far away from it. And I just love the separation that it gives. And when you combine it with fast apertures like 1.8 or 1.4, your background is gonna look like butter. My favorite short telephoto prime lens is the Sony 85mm f1.8. I know, super overrated lens, but it's that good. It's giving me that telephoto look that I want with that bokeh that I want, all in a tiny size and a very affordable <laughs> and had a very affordable price. On the other hand, quite literally, I love the Zeiss Bot as 135F 2.8. It's a compact 135, but it's ridiculously sharp. But unfortunately, I only mainly use it for wedding films now. But as a walk around lens though, I've tried this. It is a difficult lens to work with. Now I brought this lens out with me to Universal Studios and I find that I have to back up a whole lot before I get my framing right. And when you're in a theme park like Universal, you really don't have that much space to back up. But where this lens really shined for me at Universal was when I was shooting the Waterworld show. Now I was getting fantastic shots from a distance away, but that's pretty much it. With the 85 though, I've used it in various situations. I even used it at Disneyland and I still get a lot of great shots and I didn't have too much space issue with this lens. Okay, oh, so here's what I like to think. The 105 millimeter focal length might be a good in-betweener. Squeezing in that extra bit of 20 millimeters in, it's kind of giving me the best of both worlds. The telephoto look that I want, plus the little longer extra reach that I would prefer. However, I don't think I'd be too happy using the Sigma 105 millimeter. Now on this channel, I hope I'm doing a fair job providing two different perspectives, one for hobbyists and one for professionals. If you're a hobbyist, you might be in the same boat as I am. This lens is just too damn massive. Optically, it's a great lens and you're gonna be getting tack sharp result if you use it. However, if you try carrying around with this for like a day or carrying it with you on travel, it's just more hassle than it's worth. Stick with the 85 1.8, you're gonna be getting really similar results with this lens. And if you really need that F1.4, there is the Sony G Master, which is half the weight of this lens. For pros, you might know why you might need a lens like this. I'm just here to tell you that the autofocus works great, the eye autofocus works great. Just watch out for that thin strand of hair that blocks the person's eye, because this lens would just boom, nail focus on that thin strand of hair and not the person's eye, so just be careful of that. Now, if you're planning to use this lens for video, like video autofocus, I would avoid using f1.4 and even 1.8, it just wasn't reliable when I tested it out. Until I stopped down to about f2.8, it's fine. Uh, in terms of video autofocus noise, Sigma says this has the hypersonic motor, but, but you can still hear the focus motor. Boom, Sigma Art 105, yay or nay? Let me know in the comments down below. All right, t-shirt giveaway time. I'm giving away this white medium-sized t-shirt with the a7 III Vector on it. How awesome is this? Plus, bundling it up with this gray Sony Alpha Beanie, which is perfect for the winter holidays. Woo! 
Okay, so here's how you enter. You make sure you're subscribed to me because I know you are already. Uh, subscribe to me, leave a comment down below, and that's pretty much it. And I'll announce the winner in the next video that I'll upload. So make sure you hit that bell notification to be alerted when my next video drops to see if you win. And don't worry, I will be replying to the comment that you left me in that video to let you know that you win as well. And the last video's winner for this black medium A7 III decal t-shirt goes to Alyssa Carr. Alyssa, send me a message via the email in the about page of my YouTube channel to claim your prize. And again, I'll have more t-shirt giveaways until I run out and I might be running one on Instagram soon. So make sure you follow me on Instagram at Jason V Media to see when I drop those t-shirt contests on my Instagram. And before we end this video, we're gonna read some fun comments from the last video. The best Christmas gift for Sony Alpha shooters. Extra crunchy, I got my friend a Sony 100 millimeter G Master lens. And by that friend, I mean me. Way to be honest. Jags, this video was basically a list of things that I need to buy. Not sure if Matt are happy yet. Thanks for putting this together. I'm pretty much putting together a wish list for everybody in a video form. You're welcome. WN, they should be putting out those Sony Zeiss coffee cups. I bet it would sell like hotcakes. Yeah, I wouldn't mind if Sony made like a G Master coffee mug. That would be awesome. Oh, that's hot. M. Hugh Skew, but what are you getting for Christmas? Asking for a friend. Um, my friend got me a Sony Bravia X900F 4K television TV, and by friend, I meant me. Damn, wasted a lot of money. Pink design is the Gucci of photography. That's, that's, that's true. Okay, that's it for comments. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.